Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be playing another episode of Detroit Become Human. The last episode was my very first look into Detroit. So far, I have so many thoughts, so many different opinions about how I feel about AI and how heavily it's integrated into this game. I did notice a few themes already. People rebelling against the big companies that are creating the androids because they're losing their jobs and they're harboring a lot of hate and hostility towards androids because of this. I do think that it was a big mistake from those larger companies to integrate androids into society and just put them into the working class shoes. They're also very, very cheap. I think for a brand new top of the line Android when we were sitting in the store was about seven or 8K, which I mean, it's not, it, that is very expensive to me, but thinking about owning an entire Android, something that can cook your meals for you every single day, clean up your laundry, do all of your errands and household chores for $8,000 is wild and mind blowing. It makes me feel like these companies came out with the product, started mass producing them, and didn't really understand or care to see the repercussions of how it's going to affect society. And people are hating on the androids for this. There's people that are protesting and threw down Marcus in the middle of the town square because they're angry and they have a right to be. Their jobs and their livelihoods have been taken almost overnight, it kind of seems like. And honestly, if I lost my job, I would probably be right out there with the protesters. But if I took one thing away from Mass Effect, I see something really, really bad happening here. In the very first intro scene with Connor, we saw that an AI actually went against its owner, pulled a gun on the dad, murdered the dad, and held the little girl hostage because it knew that the dad was looking for another android to possibly replace him or it. This caused such a strong emotion in the android that it decided to pull a gun. It broke its programming. It went outside of what it was created to do and started having feelings of anger, of sadness, of jealousy. These are very human emotions. This is not something that an android sh should be feeling or wrestling with even. There is no mistake that androids are becoming more and more human in this time. And right now, the worst thing that you can do is mistreat them. So I sense something really bad happening here with the mistreatment of androids. The one guy with the shopping bag in the town square and his owner like did the weird chin thing to him and was like, pick up the bags, what are you doing? They're mistreating these androids. They're not treating them like a part of society. They're not being nice to them. They are just treating it like it is a piece of plastic. As we saw in the very beginning, these androids are starting to come to life. There is no doubt about it. It's very interesting to me and especially coming out of, of course, Legion in Mass Effect saying, does this unit have a soul? I think it's forming free thoughts of its own. I mean, jealousy is such a human emotion. There's nothing that can explain jealousy to an android. So I think that we're starting to see androids coming to life a little bit and that is just my theory in the game i like throwing out theories and what i have thought about in my off time away from the game we will see more today about these deviants and what's going on with kara this game is very good at immersing you and it definitely opened up some old wounds that i haven't really had to think about in a while but Hopefully today, Kara can be a light at the end of Alice's tunnel for her and we can get her out of that situation. Last time we found a gun. I'm not sure if I should pick up the gun. I felt fine with picking it up with Connor because he's a cop and I feel like you can get away with more things as an android cop. I don't know if that's true or not, but that was just my reasoning for picking up the gun in that moment. Uh, when I think about Kara holding a gun, I'm worried about Kara. I don't want her to get in trouble. I don't want anything bad to happen. We did see a lot of pan overs to the bus station. I'm guessing because we are going to make a great escape out of the house and we also opened up the window in Alice's room for a ledge. So I'm seeing kind of already what might be expected of us in that storyline. I just hope that I make all of the right decisions today to have have good outcomes. I'm already like stomach swirling a little inside, but I'm gonna take deep breaths and we're gonna get through it together. So I'll see you all in there. Good morning. 
Welcome to the Detroit experience. It's not morning, is it? Oh, it's 1130. Yeah, I guess it is morning. <laughs> so I don't know what these extras are. I kind of just want to... This wanna... is the extra section. As you play, you'll unlock all kinds of content that you can find here. Okay. Artwork. Item cost. So I have to like get bonus points to buy artwork. I wonder what this does. I kind of want to buy this just to see what it is. So it's just art that I can buy from the game. Maybe to use as like a wallpaper or something. Oh, wow. It's Connor. That doesn't really look like him. That looks like an, I don't know. It's, it just looks a little bit different than in game, <laughs> but it's Connor. Look different like looks for him. Oh my goodness. Who is that? Maybe we will play as this guy. Does that say bank of awesome? Oh my gosh. Why is he holding little kid? That is not the same guy. Was that the guy that was hanging off of the balcony? No, that was not the guy. He was blonde. This is pretty cool. I like the art packs though, because it makes me like be able to look in the game and see things that I haven't seen before. Like, I don't remember this rare bot poster or this chip poster over here. The store was kind of in disarray. I was a little bit shocked to see that like things were strewn about everywhere in an Android store that, you know, you're buying this life changing device and, you know, Apple stores, you walk in and everything's so clean and perfect and it looks beautiful. And I don't know, I was just kind of taken back that things were in disarray. I don't know why. It's kind of, it kind of made me feel like maybe this store popped up overnight. They came into business and then they were just booming and then there's just not enough time to put things away because things are getting bought so quickly that's just kind of what made me what it made me feel is that things were kind of overnight androids were able to be bought and changed lives it's kind of interesting here seeing the difference between like these suburbs kind of but they're not real they're right outside the city and this is kind of what cities are turning into is just people outside the city either move into the city or they move farther out to get away from the city and the outskirts are always like this now with dilapidated houses and you can kind of see the growth of the city in the background but all of these homes are just they're not affordable anymore or they're in such a bad area that no one wants to live there anymore. Yeah, look, this shows it really well. The contrast between the old world and the new world coming in. This actually, this shows it very, very well. Mm, I'm not excited to go back into that house. I feel like this looks different though. That that wasn't there. It was like a, a moose head or a deer head or something on the wall. Everything's in disarray. Oh, that looks so much more like sad and dilapidated. I mean, Alice's room was pretty sad looking. I'm not going to lie. Just because you could tell her little areas where she was trying to make herself feel at home and make herself safe. And her tent was the coolest. She got all of her little things in there that she loves and she made it look really nice and homey in there. But seeing the outside here versus what we actually saw in the game, it just, for some reason, it feels more dramatic here. But I guess that's the point of art. Oh, the fox. Oh, it could have been a bunny. I wonder why the art is different than the actual character in the game. Maybe these were concept arts, something that it was based on, but then it ended up changing over time. Oh, my daughter sits like that. She sits with her knees out. We always yell at her, like, don't sit with your knees out. It's bad for your knees. She sits like that all the time. 
That's a pretty android. I like the haircut. <laughs> Why is his face blurred out? Maybe because we haven't seen him yet, or... All right, that's the end of the art. Wow, I really like these art packs. I want to be able to... Maybe once I get through the storylines, I can unpack more. So is this how many story? Oh, wow, we have a lot way to go. I mean, we're only one episode in, but... A short movie about Kara. Okay. What is this about creating Kara, maybe? I'll shoot. Yeah, it looks like it. That's wild. Can you hear me? Yes. ID. KPC 897504C. Can you move your head? Your eyes now. Wow, that's wild. Cervical and optical animation. Look at the shot. heart. Now give me your initialization text. Hello. I'm the third generation AX400 Android. I can look after your house, do the cooking, mind the kids. I organize your appointments. I speak 300 languages and I am entirely at your disposal as a sexual partner. No need to feed me or recharge me. I'm equipped with a quantic battery that makes me autonomous for 173 years. Do you want to give me a name? Yeah. From now on, your name is Kara. My name is Kara. Initialization and memorization check. Now, can you move your arms? The facial expression almost looked excited that it was named and becoming. Upper limb connection. Check. Interesting. Now say something in German. Ich bin ein AX400 Android dritter Generation, erschaffen als ihr persönlicher Assistent und intimer Beziehungspartner. Say it in French. Je suis un Android de troisième génération AX400, conçu pour être votre assistante personnelle et votre partenaire intime. Okay, now sing something in Japanese. Sakura, sakura, yeah. It's so pretty. I haven't heard this song in a long time. Multilingual verbal expression check. Go ahead, take a few steps. Motion checked. Great, you're ready for work, honey. What's going to happen to me now? I'll reinitialize you and send you to a store to be sold. Sold? I'm a sort of merchandise. Is that right? Yeah, of course you're merchandise, baby. I mean, you're a computer with arms and legs and capable of doing all sorts of things. <laughs> and you're worth a fortune. Oh, I see. I You thought? What did you think? I thought... I was alive. Shit, what is this crap? That's not part of the protocol. More memory components going off the rails. Okay, recording. Defective model. Disassemble and check the required components. You're disassembling me, but why? You're not supposed to think that sort of stuff. You're not supposed to think at all, period. You must have a defective piece or a software problem no, somewhere. No, I feel perfectly fine, I assure you. Everything is all right. I answered all the tests correctly, didn't I? Yeah, but your behavior is non-standard. Please, I'm begging you, please don't disassemble me. I'm sorry, honey, but defective models have to be eliminated. That's my job. If a client comes back with a complaint, I'm going to have some explaining to do. I won't cause any problems, I promise. I'll do everything I'm asked to. I won't say another word. I won't think anymore. But I've only just been born. You can't kill me yet. Stop, will you please? Stop. Wow, this is crazy. I want to live. 
begging you. Crying? Oh my goodness. That was insane. Go and join the others. Wow. Stay in line, okay? I don't want any trouble. Thanks. Thanks the machine, not the guy, maybe? I don't know. Wow, look at the others, but she's different. My God. And the guy knows. He knows that he probably shouldn't put that on the line. I wonder if this has anything to do with the story. Maybe I shouldn't have watched this. Very interesting. Running in real time on PlayStation 3. So I guess like maybe it was a promotional video or something. I wonder if it has any correlation to... It just says short movie. I feel like I shouldn't have watched this yet. So there's a soundtrack too and a gallery. Oh, okay. So are these the people that we've played as so far? <gasps> Do we really have all of these people to discover? Do you want to buy this item gallery? I don't know what this means. So, oh, it's like I own Kara. <laughs> okay. The name Kara is thought to have been given to Alice to her by Alice, but it's quite possible that it was Kara who first whispered this name to Alice. Having been damaged following what Todd described as a stupid accident, Kara was sent for repairs several times where her memory was reset on each occasion. All right, and then magazines. I guess these are like the magazines that we've seen in the... Okay, so I can actually come back and read them again if I want to. Let's Great, survey. let's start. Would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like a human? Whoa. Just right away? <laughs> um, would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like a human? Like sexual? Or are we talking just a friendship of some sort? Yes, no, I don't know. Would you consider having a relationship? If it's like a friendship or getting to know the android, then yes, yeah. Do you think that technology could become a threat to mankind? I do, actually. Um, I do actually think that. Just because of some things that I am nervous about when it comes to, like, AI. And my biggest concern is what I've already talked about. Taking people's jobs, taking people's livelihood, and replacing it with an android that is you know it doesn't have to be paid an hourly rate it's i do see that kind of happening a lot more now recently even so yes i'm gonna say yes if you had to live on a deserted island and could only bring one object what would it be a book a cell phone pen and paper a console like a playstation console <laughs> an instrument I'm thinking pen and paper because then I can maybe like write a book or something or do some, I feel like I can do a lot more with a pen and paper than any of these other things. 
Do you consider yourself dependent on technology? Mm, yes, I am very dependent on technology in a lot of ways. What technology do you most anticipate? Androids, flying cars, space tourism, brain connected devices. Brain connected devices still scare me. I'm not ready for that. Even if there was something out tomorrow that uploaded our conscious into the cloud, I probably wouldn't do it right away. There's no way that I could possibly. Space tourism would be really cool though. Do you believe in God? Yes. Would you let an android take care of your children? Um, I honestly don't know. I want to take care of my own kid. I don't even like feel comfortable letting other people take care of my child. So I'm not sure if I would let an android take care of my child. What if it went rogue like that one? What if it got jealous or something happened and then it's programming miswired and I wasn't there? Yeah, I don't know. How much time per day would you say you spend on an electronic device? Oh, God. Uh, more. Way, yep, more. If you needed emergency surgery, would you agree to be operated on by a machine? I think I would. This is something that I talked about in the very first episode, too. I think I would. If it was you know, tested and all of that. And it's percentage of success was above 99 or 99 even, which is higher, by the way, than a normal surgeon, um, a human surgeon, then yes, I probably would. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? I do. I mean, if it's programmed and it has those programs in it that are human programs, What's to say that it can't start developing those habits, especially when you're putting it in the shoes and trying to make it as human-like as you can? Yes, I, I do. So are these compared to everybody else? Okay, so a lot of people said yes for having a relationship. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it means like friendship. If it's a sexual relationship, then I would say no, but... For just like a normal relationship, friendly or as a coworker or whatever, then then yeah. Do you think that technology could become a threat? 72% said yes. Um, pen and paper? Actually, a lot of people, oh no, it says cell phone. <laughs> Why would you bring a cell phone to a deserted island? I don't know. Wait, is it like deserted meaning there's no probably internet or anything like that, right? So why would you bring a cell phone? I was seeing it as like, you know, the tropical island situation. You're washed up on shore. What would you bring? I would bring pen and paper. But if we have access to internet, obviously I would bring a cell phone. Do you consider yourself dependent on technology? 85% said yes. Who's the 8% that said no? I would like to live in your shoes for a little bit. Brain connected devices is actually the highest one for most anticipated technology. 39%. No one wants flying cars. Flying cars sound awful, honestly. Like, I just, I never, mm, flying cars sound too much. Like something bad could happen. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that a lot said no. Do you let androids take care of your kids? Yes, 48% a lot said yes. I said I don't know because I really don't, I don't really know. Plus, I think this question looks different depending on if you actually have kids or not. Like, theoretically, if I didn't have a kid and I saw this question, I'd probably be like, yeah, I don't care. But once you actually have a kid, things change a lot in your eyes. Things, the world becomes different. It looks a little bit scarier. It looks a little bit more like I need to be hesitant of more things. So... If you would have, if I would have answered that before having a kid, I probably would have said yes too. How much time today do you spend? Yeah, one hour. Who spends only one hour? Two hours even? That's crazy. But yeah, more. I was expecting more to win. And people said yes for the surgery. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? 69% said yes. Nice. That was a cool quiz.
I just wanted to check out the extras tab just to see what it was. I also look crazy like this bright white light in my green screen do not get along. November 5th, 2038, 9.58 a.m. Okay, so we're playing as Marcus. Coming back from the paint store. <gasps> Look at this house. Wow. This is a beautiful home. Already right away, I can tell that it's owned by an artist. That makes me very, very excited. Retrieve order, Apollini paints collected, so just deposit the package, okay? Put down. We can look at ourselves in the mirror, right? We can. It's kind of like Kara. Like looking in the mirror, but not really looking in the mirror. What are these? All birds. Very still. Are they android birds? Android finches? Wow. It's actually really cool. We just booped his eyeball. Oh, that's really neat. All right, so we need to go wake Carl upstairs. Take care of Carl. So we're Carl's caretaker. I kind of want to just look around a little bit in here. I am loving all of the art in here. I know that we're working for an artist and I'm very, very excited about meeting the artist. Whoa. All right, so let's go in here first. Oh, it's a kitchen. Love the fireplace in here. There is, oops, a tray. Maybe I can take breakfast up to him. Ah, look at the mug. Take tray to dining table. Okay, so we're gonna bring him down here. I also love these, um, I don't really know the technical term for them, but the water dispenser above the stove so that you can fill up your pots with water for pasta or whatever. I really, really want that in my next house. They are like a bucket list house item for me. <laughs> I feel like they have to have a fancy term. Look at this place. Look at the big giraffe. And the fish, but it's... But it's a screen, screen line cast. It looks so good in here though. It actually looks like a really cool fish tank. Checkmate and three moves for silver. Those are really cool chess pieces. All right, there's some other little things we can interact with in here. Spin the globe. Look at that skull piece, the blue skull behind. One's a little darker. Look at the ceiling. It's very interesting. I feel like you would find that at a kid's play area, but it kind of works in here. He has a very eccentric style. Did those curtains just open? Here, let's try the piano first. The thing about Jesse Williams' face, and I noticed this when I was playing Grey's Anatomy, but he always looks like he's thinking so deeply about something. He has that face where it's just like, what do you think he's thinking about? Holy something, odes, tragedies. 
Mm, a lot of vintage books. A lot of skulls that are like decorated in here too. There was something else over here too. I think it was an article. Yeah. Century, frozen treasures, the North Pole, why Russia wants it. Bonus culture, why bankers pay themselves so much. Is President Warren too close to cyber life? Why Russia wants the North Pole? Russia's interest in the North Pole has intensified with the recent discovery of precious minerals trapped in the frozen ice, many of which are used in synthesizing therium. Interesting. Surplus therium reserves would allow either, na uh, nation, either nation to experiment in more advanced android models, enhancing their military and industrial output tremendously. That's right, because they're making military androids, too. Add to this the strategic importance of the region, which connects Russia with Europe through Norway and Denmark, as well as Canada, and the prospects of a peaceful resolution to the dispute starts to seem unlikely. It's simple. Russia has no business in the Arctic. If the Kremlin doesn't understand that, we will make them understand. Lots of politics going on, per usual. Life found on Titan. Evidence for alien life grows. <gasps> the truth is out there. President Warren to make state visit to United Kingdom. NATO Security Council divided over Arctic dispute. I want to know more about this alien life. The Dwarin, uh, sorry, Darwin probe, which left exactly 19 years ago to probe the surface of Titan's methane ice, has just confirmed the presence of microorganisms living hundreds of kilometers below the surface in an ocean of salt water protected by a thick layer of ice. Whoa, 19 years ago. After similar microbial matter was found on Enceladus, like I'm saying that wrong. Another satellite of Saturn. It seems increasingly possible that life is common in the universe. No kidding. I definitely believe that there is something out there. We can't be the only ones. Maybe I've watched too much X-Files too, but... A NASA spokesman responded to the story has stated the latest in the series of pointers to life on other planets. Our android expedition to Io is... One among many such voyages that carry a prime objective of uncovering extraterrestrial life forms. Interesting. Oops. I always do that. I press escape instead of tab. Okay. I think that was kind of everything in here. There was this crazy area that randomly opened when we walked up to it. I guess the doors are like automated here. So are the lights. <gasps> is this his art studio? Wow, this is a really nice art studio. He likes the Bellini paints. Cause this isn't the one that we picked up from the store. We're just kind of like tidying a little bit. Okay. What's this? Clean. He likes to work on huge canvases. Look at that hand one. And this one by the door. I like that one. It's very interesting. Why is the head detached from the body? And it looks like he also sculpts things too. Yeah, it's not just painting. He likes to sculpt. Clean. I don't know if we're supposed to be doing any of this. He didn't, it doesn't say anything except for go away Carl. And I've, I just am in love with this house. All right. There's one more thing over here. Clean. You can hear the door in the background like opening up and closing like it's not sure if we're going to go through it. All right. Let's go ahead and 
find out where Carl is. So I think the only other place to go is upstairs, right? Yeah, that's just a window. All right, let's head upstairs. Look at the, <laughs> the carpeting on the stairs. That's very cool. He's obviously elderly because there is a little thing to take him downstairs. Is that a... Yeah, it's a... Like a woman, maybe? Laying down or... I love all of his art. Ooh, look at this piece over here. It even has a little light above it. Looks like it might be made of something. Maybe clay or gold even. I don't know. He obviously seems very wealthy. Is that a whale of some sort? I'm going to see if there's anything else over here. I also want to see if the spiral staircase <laughs> has a landing. Or if it's, yeah, it's literally just for show. Because it's it doesn't go anywhere. That's so funny. Look at all the moose. Or like the deer heads over here. Oh, look at the backyard. Looks like a pond. I hope we get to go back there. It looks very zen. Look at the detail on the wood paneling on the library. All right. I'm guessing this is his room. Yeah, I can see him sleeping over there. I can hear him snoring. Oh. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. The weather is partly cloudy, 54 degrees, 80% humidity with a strong possibility of afternoon showers. It sounds like a good day to spend in bed. It's Admiral I did Hackett. I go to pick up the paint that you ordered. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. That is the difference between you and me, right, Marcus? You never forget anything. Oh, my heart could just probably explode right now because it's Admiral Hackett and he's playing the artist. That is so cool. I noticed the Show voice right arm, away. Please, Carl. No. <laughs> Carl. Thank you. I like his tattoos. I just opened my eyes and I'm already gritting my teeth. Yeah, that looks painful. Oh, I actually have to. Humans are such a fragile machine. They break down so quickly. All this effort to keep them going. Hey, what happened to your clothes? Oh, it's nothing. Just some demonstrators in the street, Carl. What a bunch of idiots. They think they can stop progress by roughing up a few androids? Yeah. I hope they didn't harm you. Oh, no, no. They just pushed me around, Carl. I'm fine. Okay. I'll take you to the bathroom now. Hmm. Oh. It's kind of refreshing to see someone that actually sticks up for the androids. I love his whole room, his whole house. It's decorated so amazing. Except for that cat, that's kind of scary. Hmm. He got him dressed too. And when we first saw him, he kind of like Anything him. special on the agenda today? Yes, there's the opening of your retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art. Mm. The gallery director left four messages asking to confirm your attendance. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. We'll see about that later. Okay. What else? 
Just your usual fan mail. I've already answered. Hmm. Hmm. Any news from Leo? No, Carl. I can call him if you like. No. No, I don't. Oh wow, him. that thing's fast. But yeah, I just thought it was really interesting that when we first came in, he was already talking to him like he was a human, like he was. I'm starving. You know, they have differences. Well, your breakfast is ready. Bacon and eggs, just the way you like them. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. Mm. How is it still that hot? Television. <laughs> Why don't you find something to do while I finish my breakfast? Oh, sure. Hmm? Okay, Carl. Okay. Something to do. Well, we've already looked around a lot in here. There are some things that we can look at. Maybe if I look at the books, he will explain them to me or something? Look at his books more. Oh, I can read. Read a book. What else can we do? We could probably play the piano again. Television off. Oh. Man kind of so depressing. Nothing but greed, stupidity, and violence. 5,000 years of civilization just to get to where we are. Yeah. Maybe if we play the piano, we can cheer him up. Sit down, find something else. Yeah, let's play the piano. Melancholic, hopeful, intimate, enigmatic. Hmm. Let's play hopeful, because we're trying to cheer him up. I see. intro song it's very robotic and I'm trying not to make it robotic but it is maybe if we go a little bit faster A metronome. <laughs> 
so mechanical. Even the eye movement is mechanical. I didn't know that was N. I would have slowed down. <laughs> Something has changed in the way you play. Sometimes I think you have more humanity than most humans. Oh, wow. One day I won't be here to take care of you anymore. You'll have to protect yourself and make your choices. Decide who you are and want to become. This world doesn't like those who are different, Marcus. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Let's go to the studio. Oh, wow. He really, really loves Marcus. He, he sees the future in him. He treats him with respect. He knows what he's capable of. That was beautiful. That was a really, really neat moment. All right, do I put you on this thing? That's so cool. Oh, look at his little palette. Let's see where we left off. Remove the sheet. Okay. He loves blue. I've noticed blue is his color. Wait for Carl's instruction. Studio cleaned. So I just wait. Okay. I guess I was supposed to do that now. But now we can watch him paint. I love his tattoos. Mm. Oh, he's coming back down. Look at him looking at the painting. So, what's your verdict, Marcus? like don't like opinion no opinion i like it yeah yes there is something about it mm. something i can't quite define i guess i like it mm. the truth is i have nothing left to say anymore each day that goes by brings me closer to the end i'm just an old man clinging to his brushes carl it's not true but enough about me. <laughs> Carl. Let's see if you have any talent. Me? Give it a try. Try painting something. Wow. Paint? But would I... Painting what? Anything you want. Give it a try. <sighs> okay. That's really neat. <gasps> Look at the smile. 
He's excited. Okay, find a subject. We can paint the statue. We can paint the desk. We can paint Carl's painting. I feel like that would make him upset. Let's do the statue. This is neat. He's painting the statue like that, but he's just doing like lines like. <laughs> okay. That is a perfect copy of reality. The painting is not about replicating the world. It's about interpreting, improving on it, showing something you see. Carl, I don't think I can do that. It's not in my program. I... Go on, go, try it. Grab that canvas. Mm. Do something for me. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Trust me. Wow. Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel and let your hand drift across the canvas. Android's humanity identity. Hmm. Why is it so hard? Let's do humanity. How how would an android see humanity? I want to know. Anger, empathy, hope, comfort. How about hope? Hope for humanity. I want to see what that looks like. Look, he's actually painting. He's not just doing like the the j j like photocopy of the statue he's actually thinking and doing and feeling what he is putting on the paper right now Hey, Dad. Oh, his Leo. son. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by. It's been a while, right? You all right? Yeah, he looks a little on edge. You don't look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I need some cash, Dad. Again? What happened to the money I just gave you? Uh, well... It just goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on it again, aren't you? No. No, no, I swear it's not that. No, don't lie to me, Leo. What difference does it make? I just need some cash. That's all. Oh, my God. Sorry. The answer is no. What? Why? You know why. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do know why. <laughs> you'd, rather, you'd rather take care of your uh, plastic toy here than your own son, right? Tell me, Dad, what's, what's it got that I don't? It's smarter, more obedient, not like me, right? But you know what? This thing is not your son. It's a fucking machine! Leo, that's enough. Enough. You don't care about anything except yourself and your goddamn paintings. You've never loved anyone. You never loved me, Dad. You never loved me. Hmm. 
That was an intense situation. Was that the end of the story? It's hard to figure out when we're just coming into the situation. If Leo, if he really did feel that way growing up or if the drugs talking now are making him feel that way now. You never loved me. You love this plastic thing more than me. Is he just desperate and looking for drugs or, or money for the drugs? Or is Carl actually guilty of possibly neglecting him when he was younger because he was an up and coming artist? You never really know. But I do know that the relationship is obviously very, very strained right now. But up until that last part, this entire thing was amazing. I, wow, I, it blew, it blew away any expectation that I had from this game introducing art. And it's amazing that I actually talked about how much art means to me. And then to see that one of the androids that we get to play at is this awesome artist's android. And he actually thinks about androids the way that I think humanity should start looking at them, not being so quick to just be so aggressive towards them that was a, that's what i was trying to talk about in my intro is that if these androids are becoming more and more human and you're just treating them poorly you're knocking them down you're calling them plastic you're you know doing whatever you're doing to them replacing them as if they're nothing they're gonna start harboring that hatred and bad things are gonna happen to humanity and if they really are, if the androids really are starting to get that self-awareness and it's starting to become part of them, then it could turn really, really bad fast if all of these androids start thinking like humans and they notice and pick up on all of the cues of being called plastic, of being called it, and they're going to rebel. Something really, really bad could happen potentially. I think more people need to look at it like Carl, like it's a new way of life. It's a new way of looking at things and, and a new way of living. But this was awesome. This was really, really cool. Um, so we ended up playing the piano. I think the other thing was that we could read. So I'm not sure what would have come from that. Um, and I didn't explore the other thing because I really wanted to play the piano. And I thought that it was it was nice. I don't think it really mattered how we played it. But we just had that interaction with Carl where he said, I'm not going to be around to take care of you. Um, you're going to have to look after yourself. And it was a very eye-opening conversation to have with him. So yeah, we copied something, but then we painted from the heart. I don't know what made me choose humanity. I really just wanted to see Marcus's take on humanity. I wanted to know how he views it in his own brain. I mean, Carl was amazing. He made him shut his eyes so that he couldn't copy anything around him and then actually draw what he wanted to draw from the heart. And I drew it in hope because of Carl's entire thing with the news and listening to everything going on with Russia, wanting to take over the Arctic and all of that stuff. And I just wanted to, I wanted humanity to be hopeful and maybe by drawing it hopefully and not doing like anger or anything like that it also kind of opens up marcus's eyes like maybe i want humanity to be hopeful too i don't know that's just how i was thinking about it but he created this beautiful piece that looked like a human hand reaching up to an ai hand kind of like the michelangelo painting of the creation of adam and it just it brought some feelings in me that was really really amazing to see that Marcus created that from seemingly just his heart I don't know if he's actually seen that painting before probably since he lives with Carl and I'm sure Carl has all sorts of art in his house but yeah this entire storyline was very cool a lot of people chose identity for this I was gonna choose identity but I just decided not to a lot of people copied the statue yeah, a lot of people played the piano, hopefully. And a lot, kind of a lot played the piano. Carl noticed Marcus's clothes. That's actually a thing that he can't notice. Interesting. We wake Carl, we activated the birds, we read the news articles. All right, November 5th, 2038. 
Eleven twenty one PM. Ooh, it's late. Jimmy's bar. Oh, we're Connor again. No androids allowed. Owners will be prosecuted. Oh, we're a cop, so. Fine, Lieutenant Anderson. Look around using the mouse. Scan faces. Okay, I think we need to get closer. Mismatch, Myers, Derek. Born in 89. Security guard, none. Uh, no criminal record. Shit, I thought androids weren't allowed in here. Yeah. Says the one wearing a cyber life hat. <laughs> Ooh, olives. I love olives. And that looks like a pretzel, like a soft pretzel. It looks delicious. I think I'm hungry. You want to buy me a drink? Who said that? Him? Who is this? Mismatch Christopher Gray. Um, born in 83, unemployed, and a DUI on his criminal record. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to buy you a drink, buddy. I'm sorry. This is cool how you can, like, know everything about... Well, not everything, but know a lot about a person just by scanning them with Connor. Edward Dempsey, born in 95? This guy is three years uh, younger than me? What in the world? This really puts the future into perspective. <laughs> Holy... Jonah Graham, born in 87. No criminal record. Look at that burger. It's not him. Kim, delivery driver, currently unemployed. Domestic abuse. Aww. Excuse me? I'm guessing it's not these people. Dennis Ward, a narcotic supplier. Like, legally? Oh no, it's a criminal record thing. Okay. <laughs> Can we scan you? Hey, get out of here. I think they're getting mad at me. Chris Roberts, unemployed none. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we play this game? Oh. I was trying to go towards the arcade machine. He actually looks at himself in the mirror. Ban androids. Androids killed our country. We cannot visit the ladies. We can peek into the men's room. 31% unemployment rate. When will it stop? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. What can you buy for 75 cents? Oh, I think those are condoms. Beauty sex. It's <laughs> a weird name for a condom company. All right. Who have we scanned? This dude? Oh, there he is. Hank Lieutenant Anderson. Police Lieutenant, born in 85. He doesn't look like his picture. No criminal record. I want to see if I can play with this arcade machine. Can I play this, please? I guess we can't. Samuel McRae, born in 2012. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to him. I don't think I can play the Lieutenant machine. Lieutenant Anderson, my name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. I looked for you at the station, but nobody knew where you were. They said you were probably having a drink nearby. I was lucky to find you at the fifth bar. Oh. We've been what looking. You, want? you were assigned a case early this evening. A homicide involving a cyberlife android. 
In accordance with procedure, the company has allocated a specialized model to assist investigators. Well, I don't need any assistance. Especially not from a plastic asshole like you. So just be a good little robot and get the fuck out of here. <sighs> Reason, threat, and understanding persist. Uh, let's be understanding. I understand that some people are not comfortable in the presence of androids, but I, I am perfectly comfortable. Now back off before I crush you like an empty beer can. Reason, threat, and persist. Let's reason with him. Listen, I think you should stop drinking and come with me. It'll make life easier for both of us. Hmm. Spill his drink, buy him another, wait outside. Let's buy him a drink. You know what? I'll buy you one for the road. What do you say? Bartender, the same again, please. See, that gym wonders the technology. Make it a double. Says he's neutral to us now, which is good. So his relationship obviously means something to us. Oh. <sighs> Did you say homicide? should come patient firm diplomatic firm no way i'm coming with you oh that Listen, hurt dang you really have to stop pissing me off if you want to make it to the rest of the night in one piece conflicting orders selecting priority oh no follow lieutenant anderson yeah i'm about to say like we have to go that's why i was being firm but i Josh should probably Douglas be nicer to hank can you confirm that this is a homicide I'm not confirming anything. What is that? It's like a drone thing. Typical DPD. They don't tell us shit. Androids are not permitted beyond this point. It's with me. You don't talk, you don't touch anything, and you stay out of my way. Got it? Got it. Evening, Hank. We were starting to think you weren't gonna show. Yeah, that was the plan till this asshole found me. Mm. So, you got yourself an android, huh? Oh, very funny. Just tell me what happened. We had a call around eight from the landlord. The tenant hadn't paid his rent for a few months, so he thought he'd drop by, see what was going on. And that's when he found the body. Jesus, that smell even worse before we open the windows. The victim's name's Carlos Ortiz. Mm, listen to the briefing, review theft evidence. And aggravated assault. According to the neighbors, he was kind of a loner. Stayed inside most of the time. They hardly ever saw him. Well, stayed he's in. Wasn't worth calling everybody out in the middle of the night. Could have waited till morning. I'd say he's been there for a good three weeks. We'll know more when the coroner gets here. There's a kitchen knife over here. Probably the murder weapon. Any okay. sign of a break in? Nope. The landlord said the front door was locked from the inside. All the windows were boarded up. The killer must have gone out the back way. What do we know about his android? Not much. The neighbors confirmed he had one, but it wasn't here when we arrived. I, I gotta get some air. Uh, yeah, it's Make probably. I'll be outside if you need me. Very rank in here. Investigate the crime scene. Briefing concluded. Review evidence 0 of 10. All right. So he had an android, but it can't be found. I feel this like. This letter is perfect. I was just Straight about to say that. Human rights like this. Yep, I was just Chris, about to say that. Is this written in the victim's blood? I would say so. We're taking samples for analysis. Okay. So, I want to examine him. It's 
28 knife wounds. My gosh. Internal bleeding, 28 stab wounds, deceased more than 19 days ago. That is a lot of stab wounds. Red ice on his mouth. I feel like red ice is just what everyone's on now. Carlos Ortiz. Time of death about 11.30 p.m. Fingerprints, database, match, Ortiz, Carlos, criminal record, theft, and aggravated assault. Okay. So he has a little bit of a record. I mean, look at his house, but he owned an Android. Okay, what's this? Victim fell here. Okay, let's keep going. Victim was stabbed, okay. They came from the kitchen, okay. He was stabbed 28 times. Yeah. Seems like the killer really had it in for him. Yeah. Definitely wanted to do the murders. Red ice. Seems our friend Carlos liked a party. Yeah. Chris, I want full analysis on the narc. All right, so let's Got check us. out these letters. Consider it done, Lieutenant. Analyze. Regular letters, font, Cyberlife Sands. So definitely not created by a human. It has a font and everything. Interesting. Oh, that Jesus, what the hell are you doing? I'm analyzing the blood. I can check samples in real time. I'm sorry. I should have warned you. Okay, just don't put any more evidence in your mouth. You got it? <laughs> got it. <sighs> Fucking hell, I can't believe this shit. Uh, it should, it's really cool that he can do this. They should be thankful. Because all the stuff they were talking about sending off to the lab, now they can do it. And it's Ortiz's blood. So whoever did this to him used his own blood to Mike, write this there? on the yeah, wall. That's it. We just found that out in five seconds versus waiting, you know, 24 hours, two to four business days. Got some red ice scattered around. Victim used drugs, clearly. The murder weapon. No fingerprints. Android involvement? Question mark. That's what I'm thinking. Just because they can't find the android, which is a bit weird, especially if he owned one. Because androids, they shouldn't stray far from their owner. I feel like it would have reported the crime, if anything. So makes me wonder all right nothing over here i think we're just kind of looking for these yellow shiny things that they've laid out dried blood ortez 19 days okay i'm sorry what's this what's keeping the car he should have been there a half hour ago Come visit us, Eden Club. So he went to like a strip joint or something. His house. He's on his way. He won't be long now. Okay. There's something on the door jam here. Blood. There's something Come over on, guys, here. Get a move on. We don't want to be here all night. What is that? No one wants to stay here a minute longer than they have to. Oh, it's just more dry blood. Okay. I thought it was like pointing at the cords or something. Okay. Examine the chair. There was a struggle, maybe. Left and ugly. Okay, just fingerprints. Yeah, signs of a struggle. Okay. 
There's something weird in the bathroom. Did you take a look? The bathroom, okay. Fingerprints belonging to Carlos Ortiz on a baseball bat. Okay. A dent from violent impact. Traces of Therium. <gasps> we read in that news article that the androids are made from Therium. So could have been smacking the android around with this thing maybe in self-defense deviant took a knife oh after he was being hit by the baseball bat deviant was attacked emotional shock Interesting. So he attacked him and then the deviant picked up a knife in self-defense. But why did he attack him? Um, okay. There's one more evidence to find. Let's look over here. He also said there was something strange in the bathroom. So I wonder what that was. What am I looking at here? Gossip Weekly. <laughs> Judy Hewitt shows off her new beach bod. Android sex officially better. Sorry, ladies, but plastic can't be beat. Mark Water and Nancy Rice step out together. I guess those are maybe famous people. The results of our survey is in. It's official. 68% of men. Oh, come on. They could have put 69. <laughs> Prefer sex with an android to be a to a real woman. And with 52% of men saying that they've tried the experience at least once, that's a lot of Android love to go around. I'm not surprised, honestly. There were a few reasons given for this um, preference, but we think that we should know the real reason. Androids don't want to talk about their feelings afterwards. This story was sponsored by Eating Club. Discretion is our middle name. Interesting. New app and headset allows for li live translations of all languages. That's actually very cool. Is your Android spying on you? CyberLife could be using its Androids to collect private information. Yeah, most likely. Zero gravity subway to connect New York City and DC in 45 minutes. That would be amazing. Um, is your Android spying on you? More and more experts are suggesting that CyberLife uses its 120 million Androids to record details of private conversations of customers and sell them to trading partners. Yeah, just like everything else that you buy, your cell phone, your computer, it all, I'm sure you sign something in the dotted lines that you never read about. And so I, I think it's always funny when I would talk about something like out loud at work when I used to work in the hospital and I would hop on Facebook later and see like an ad for whatever I was talking about, whether it's like a makeup or a certain drink or something. It's just, it always weirded me out that it was like that. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure it is happening. Profits. He said there was something weird in the bathroom, but I don't know where the bathroom is. Oh, here it is. The shower curtain, I guess. Open. Obsessive writing. But this isn't like perfect lettering like the what is this religious offering question mark from the android or from the ortez fellow Well, 
I think we should go find Lieutenant. We read the news article. That's the last glowing yellow thing. All right, so let's report back to him. Lieutenant, I think I figured out what happened. Oh yeah? Shoot, I'm all ears. It all started. In the living room, in the kitchen, in the kitchen. In the kitchen. There are obvious signs of a struggle. The question is, what exactly happened here? I think the victim attacked the android. With the bat? Yeah, with the bat. With the bat. That lines up with the evidence. Go on. The android stabbed the victim. The victim stabbed the android through the chair. The android stabbed the victim. The android stabbed the victim. So the android was trying to defend itself, right? Okay, then what happened? The victim fled to... The living room, yeah. The living room. Tried to get away from the android. All right, that makes sense. The android murdered the victim. With a knife, without a weapon, with the bat. Yeah, with the bat. With the, with knife. the knife. Twenty-eight okay. times. Your theory's not totally ridiculous, but it doesn't tell us where the android went. True. It was damaged by the bat and lost some therium. Lost some what? Therium. You call it blue blood. It's the fluid that powers androids' biocomponents. It evaporates after a few hours and becomes invisible to the naked eye. Oh, but I bet you can still see it, can't you? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Pink liked that. So let's find the Therium. Search for blue blood traces. Oh, I see it on the floor. It's still in the house? Excuse me. Okay. Mm What's that? Examine. A ladder used to be here? Okay. Open. <gasps> okay, just some brooms. I guess he got scared because it turned yellow. <laughs> Look up. Oh, there's an attic. That's creepy. It's probably up there, right? Traces lead to the attic. Okay, find something to climb. Was there anything in the bathroom? We can't use that chair because the laundry's on it. Maybe the chair in the kitchen. Yeah, take. Hey, 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 what are you doing with that chair? I'm going to check something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to check something. <laughs> All right, let's place it down. Climb. Open. Oh, that's creepy. I don't like that. Oh, it's dark and scary up here. I don't want to search it by myself. Oh my God, look at that. I don't like any part of this. Okay. Oh, I hate this. <gasps> oh, okay. Why? 
I kind of saw it like through the crack for a little bit, so I knew it wasn't the android. But why does he have that in his house? Oh, this is so scary. What if it attacks me? <gasps> I just saw it. It's running. It ran across the room. It's obviously a deviant android. It's very unhinged right now. Oh, this is nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel. Okay, he's not attacking me. That's good. I was just defending myself. I know. He was gonna kill me. I'm begging you. Don't tell him. Hey, what the fuck is going on up there? Should I tell him? Do I have a choice? It's here, Lieutenant! Oh shit. I mean we Chris, are a cop. Ben, get your asses in here now! That was that? Oh my goodness. Look at all the stuff. Wow. Okay. That was crazy. I wonder what else could have happened. Could we have like failed the mission completely? Where does it branch off? Read Android Spy, investigate the writing, examine the statue, check the shower. I think we missed something here. I wonder what else could have possibly happened. Like, if we could have failed the investigation, maybe. I guess because we didn't find the deviant. Maybe if I didn't answer the questions correctly. Sometimes I felt like they were trying to trick me, so I had to think about them twice. And then the timer running down gave me anxiety. So I felt like I was going to fail. Look at all these 99%. It was a pretty, like, straightforward interaction. They scan the customers. So there's nothing here to actually play with the arcade machine. I was wondering about that. And I'm glad that we weren't, there wasn't anything for that. It would have made me sad that I missed it. Um, but Hank's opinion about us is neutral. So yeah, something happened with this android. He was being obviously mistreated because he was being beaten with a bat. And I guess finally reached his breaking point and pulled a knife on Carlos and murdered him i mean he stabbed him 28 times that to me screams i have reached my breaking point i am aware that i am who i am and i am i've had enough you don't just stab someone 28 times in self-defense it becomes more of like a that i'm doing this because i i need to do this right now if you are stabbing someone in self-defense and it was purely self-defense. I feel like it would be like a stab or two until they're actually down. After like the fifth stab, I'm sure he was not getting back up. So it seems very aggressive for the deviant to do that. Yes, I do think that he was definitely self-defending himself. But at what point was self-defense gone and actual murder taking place? It is pretty intense to see that happen like that. And what's up with the weird thing in the shower, that shrine that was made in flowers and the weird writing on the wall? I don't think that it was Carlos, but maybe because he was on drugs and the writing on the wall wasn't all uniform in that um, cyber life sands or whatever that Carlos's blood was written with that said, I am human. So, and after the fact, writing, I am human using Carlos's blood, this android has seen some stuff what a crazy crime to see i think overall out of the three stories i love the art and i love the interaction with marcus and all of that i'm not really sure where it's going with the sun but i think connor's is my favorite so far and i know that's kind of crazy to say because of how much i do love art and ai coming into art and i love that entire storyline but Connors is pretty cool. I like the investigative side of it. I grew up watching a lot of NCIS and CSI, and I feel like I'm in there. <laughs> it's very cool. So I am very interested to see where the rest of this storyline is going to go now that we found the Deviant. 
we're obviously dealing with an uptick of cases of more deviants. I don't know if this is a new thing or if it's just something that has been going on for a little bit now, but people obviously aren't talking about it. I feel like if there were more deviants acting out, more people would be hearing about it, but maybe the company is keeping things undercover. That's why CyberLife also sent out somebody like Connor to keep things, to keep an eye on things and maybe also to keep things a little bit under wraps. I don't know, but I'm sensing that this is kind of a newish thing, but the lieutenant doesn't seem to think that it's that big of a deal. So I don't know. It just makes me kind of wonder how many deviants, how many times has this been going on? And why aren't there more questions being asked to cyber life about it? Maybe we'll find out. November 5th, 2038. Oh, we're back in the house of Kara and Alice. 9.14 p.m. She's so sad. Oh. Dinner is ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Okay. Just wakes up and does his red ice right away. What's for dinner? Spaghetti. Ooh, spaghetti is my ultimate comfort food meal. Love spaghetti with garlic wasn't bread. Much in the kitchen. I did what I could. Okay. It's so dark in here. Serve dinner, food serve, turn on the light. Okay. <laughs> Serve Alice and Todd. Oh, some water. A oh, napkin. That's funny. I lost my job because of androids. And I need somebody to take care of this goddamn house. What do I do? I go out and hire a fucking android. What a joke. Androids are so fucking wonderful. They never fail. They're never tired. They're never sad. This guy. They're so fucking perfect. They ruined my fucking life. Pretty sure drugs did that, but okay. What are you looking at? Leave her alone. What's your fucking problem? Not the life you dreamed of, eh? Maybe you think this is easy. Maybe you think it's my fault we live in this fucking shithole. My fault your fucking mother took off. You should stop taking drugs, Todd. Sometimes you really scare me, Todd. She looks like she's ready to the run. Bitch took off without a word. Fucking whore walked out on me for a fucking accountant! Oh my god. It's all your fault. Daddy, no. It's all your fucking fault! <laughs> Get back here. Come back here? Come back here right now! I'm gonna go check on her. You stay there. Don't you dare fucking move, or I'll bust you worse than last time. What? Don't move? Are you serious? I just have to sit here and watch this happen? Off, word. I could have been happy. Can we? Can we break code? I'm gonna do it. I have to go protect her. Yeah, let's do it. He's unhinged. He's gonna hurt her. <gasps> wow, are we...
we deviant now? Protect Alice? Reason with Todd? No. There's no reasoning with that guy. There's no reasoning at all. I'm gonna go check on her. We need to get out of here, probably. Should I grab the gun? I'm not gonna grab the gun. I don't wanna grab the gun. I think it's a bad decision. This is so scary. It's okay. He's coming. He's gonna hurt me. Run! Get away! Or he's gonna break you like last time! Lock room, lock room. Alice! Alice! Daddy's coming! Lock, lock, lock. Let's go. We're gonna get out the window. We're leaving. I need to find something. Yeah, we have to go. Yep, we're leaving. No, Carl! We'll fall! Go out. It's the only way. Hurry, come on. My heart is pounding. Carl! Join Alice, go. Come back here right now! out of here whoa that was insane <laughs> i thought we were gonna fall come on the bus right on time i had a feeling oh thank god we're away from him She's so small and innocent. It sucks that the mom left for an accountant. Sure, that's fine. You can leave Todd, but why didn't you take the kid with you? Like, why wouldn't you take your daughter with you when you know that he is capable of being aggressive and he has a drug problem and you left him for somebody else so you could be happy, but you left your daughter behind? I... I will never understand some people. I wonder how all the other paths could have gone. I know one was probably that we could have gone into Todd's room. Um, and took the gun and maybe even shot him. But I don't think we need any more trouble than we're already in. I mean, right now, we are an android trying to take care of a little girl. And we're in the compartment of the bus that we're not supposed to be in. And technically, Alice doesn't even own us, so I'm not sure what is going to happen from here. But I don't think that starting off trying to get away from Todd by murdering him is a good way to go. The cops would definitely be on to us. Dinner was ready. Todd got mad. There's a way to not break the programming. Oh, that's awful. Kara becomes deviant, but we had to. We had to to save Alice. There was no other way. Go upstairs. So I'm guessing that one could have been that Todd, like talk to Todd and try to talk him down. But I'm guessing by how short this track is that it would not have gone well if we encountered Todd without a weapon, without anything. Yeah, so we went upstairs. This might have been the one to get the gun. And then maybe something bad happened with that. Escape by the window. Maybe if I failed that QT, something else would have happened that was majorly wrong. But I feel like we did good. Only 7% were able to evade. Surely there has to be another, like maybe it's like a different escape route or something after everything but I feel like our transition out of the house was very smooth apparently a lot more stuff could have gone down if we weren't so quick but I had one thing as soon as he started yelling when we were sitting down at dinner 
I knew that we were just going to jump out the window. That's it. Like we're, we're leaving. I don't care. Lock the door. We're going. There is no talking about it. There is no getting the gun. There's nothing else that is more important in this situation than leaving the house. Knowing from experience, there is nothing that is more important in this situation than leaving and getting out and getting away from that person. Nothing else is going to work. There is no reasoning. There is no talking down. There is no pulling a gun and then being like, oh, I'm scared. You can't scare somebody like that. They are out. They're seeing red. There is no other way to go about it. There is nothing else that they want to do except cause you hurt because they are hurting so much themselves. So I think that that was probably the best scenario that could have come from that. I'm happy with that. I don't know if it was the right decision or what is going to even come from Kara and Alice now because she's an android. She's an android with a kid. She doesn't know. I mean, she's a program to take care of kids, but in a setting where A, she is not a deviant and B, it is a home setting. This is out in the wild, essentially. So it'll be very interesting to see where we can go from here and how we can take care of Alice. I hope that we can continue to keep her safe, but the world, the way that it is now like against androids, I sense a very scary future for them. It's also making me nervous that only 7% of people made it here. Um, so I don't know if I did something wildly wrong or how did only 4% escape by the window? That was my very first thought coming out of the last time with Kara was like, there's a window. I'm going to use it to get out. How do you not escape by window? Only 4%. That's wild. All right, everyone. I am going to stop here for the day. I think that we're sensing a lot of the themes that I thought we were going to find in this game already. And it's honestly just blowing my mind. Not only are we being introduced to AI and art, but... We're also being taught by Admiral Hackett. I just think it's very, very, very cool. The things that Carl had to say were very eye-opening. And I think that if a lot more people looked at androids like Carl looks at androids, the world would be in a better place than it is right now. But I can also see it on the other side. Carl has a life set out for him. He is an artist, a well-established artist. He was debating whether he wants to go to his own award show that morning. He is obviously very wealthy. I can understand how from a wealthy artist perspective, why not involve androids into your daily life and have them be free thinking and free forming and get this personality and basis and have a new way of life where androids can coexist with humans. Looking at it from somebody else's perspective, even just a normal nine to fiver, androids look a lot more scary and money is always going to be the basis of people's thoughts if you're more well off in carl's situation you're going to look at androids a lot differently than someone that lost their job to an android and can't get another one because everything else that you qualify for an android has already taken that position so i can see all sides of it here and it's just really interesting to think about the different walks of life and how different people are affected by androids. What does the future look like? For the rich, it looks good. For the rich, it looks like I can own an android but still make the money that I'm making. For the people that work that nine to five of collecting garbage or working the construction job or any of those other things, they don't have a job that they can call theirs anymore. They're on the street, they're poor, they're broke, they're looking for work. And the people that lost it to everything and are fallen off the wagon by drugs now are buying androids that they can't afford and doing bad things to them they're abusing them they're being rude to them they're calling them plastics and hitting them with a baseball bat just because they are unhappy in their own lives and it's very it's very interesting to see it from marcus's perspective and then from Kara's perspective, and then looking at Connor's and kind of mixing all of the worlds together with his investigations. How do you think that the android was treated with the one wealthy family in the very beginning with the little girl and it knew that it was gonna be replaced and it freaked out? Maybe they were treating it kindly. 
they were taking care of it. It had a nice home. It had a little girl to play with and look after. And I'm not sure about how the dad or the mom was responding to the android and maybe that's why it just shot him. But the dad could have also been very kind to the android, just like Carl's being kind. But what if Marcus found out that he was being replaced? Would he have those same feelings of anger and turn deviant? It just, it's things like this that make me wonder and I can't wait to get into the next parts of the story with you guys because I am seeing a lot of things that are throwing up red flags but also make me think and wonder what's causing these deviants overall to diverge from their path, diverge from their programming and think more human thoughts. Is it simply just those feelings of jealousy and anger and rage and being mistreated or is it something else entirely? I am definitely looking forward to coming in next time and seeing where this storyline goes. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye everyone.